Welcome back. In this video, we're going to complete the work we started last time to enable shared authentication between the ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET app in our incremental migration scenario. Now, as you may recall from last time, we got the uh, shared auth almost working. The, the one piece that wasn't yet functional was being able to log off from the ASP.NET Core app because when we make a log off request, that gets routed to the ASP.NET app and the account controller uh, protects the log off endpoint with a validate anti forgery token attribute. And the ASP.NET Core app isn't able to satisfy that because they're separate apps, they would have separate anti forgery tokens. So let's take a look at how we can solve that now using this really useful library called Microsoft Owen Security Interop that allows us to actually share these auth cookies between ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core so that we'll be able to log off without even going to the ASP.NET app and avoid that issue. The first thing we're going to have to do is if we pop into our program.cs in the ASP.NET ASP Core app, we're going to add a little bit here. We're going to add some setup that's going to configure cookie authentication. And we're even though we don't have to use cookie authentication as our default scheme, having it available means we'll be able to sign out and we'll be able to sign out from the cookie that was provided by ASP.NET. So we're going to come down here and uh, we're going to need to be able to protect the, the auth cookies with data protection. And for demo purposes, I'm just going to store data protection keys on disk. So I'm going to combine uh, environment.git folder path, environment, special folder, application data uh, with, uh, we'll just call this subfolder DP keys. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, path, this string that I just came up with as the place to store things. So now we're going to configure data protection. And for that, we need to add data protection. We say we're gonna persist the keys to the file system uh, for an application called eShop. Now this persisting of the file system is, is a quick and easy way to do this, but in production, you might not want to do that because you might not have the ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core apps running on the same machine and they both need access to these keys. So you might want to persist keys to uh, Azure Blob Storage or to a Redis cache or something else. And so you could plug in the mechanism that works here for your solution. For my demo, this is gonna be the quickest and the easiest, so I don't have to set up some other resource. Okay, and now that we have data protection available, we can configure cookie authentication like so. We're going to add authentication, uh, we're going to add cookie authentication, and we're specifically going to set some very particular um, settings here. Uh, and those settings are we need to make sure that we give a particular name for the cookie that's going to match the name that we're going to use on the ASP.NET side. So they're going to be looking at the same cookie for auth authentication. Uh, they'll also be using the same data protection. Um, now, in here, I'm still saying that the default auth scheme is going to be remote app authentication. So this means that even though we understand the cookie, we're not going to look at it by default for authentication. We're going to still defer to the ASP.NET app for identity, but we'll be able to use the cookie authentication if we want to like log out or something like that. Now, you might want to change this to actually be... Um, the, the, the cookie uh, identity application scheme uh, instead. Now the benefit of this, if I were to set this as my default authentication scheme and change this variable to false, now the ASP.NET Core app is not going to go to the ASP.NET app at all. It's going to do its own authentication by uh, looking at the cookie uh, locally and not have to make that HTTP request. So this is actually preferable if it works for your scenario because it means that both ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core will authenticate independently, but they'll store identity in the same cookie in the user session so that if one logs the user in or out, the other app will respect it. So this is kind of the ideal. The challenge is that we're just going to get the default uh, a challenge behavior in ASP.NET Core. So if the user isn't logged in, we're going to redirect to the default endpoint to try and log in, which in this case actually works because we just have the default account controller in ASP.NET. So if the user isn't logged in, uh, the default cookie auth scheme is going to say, okay, I think we need to redirect to this location. And it's going to uh, actually already be redirecting to the ASP.NET's login um, path, which is fine. And that all works. 
Um, if you had some sort of customized challenge mechanism, or you didn't want to use this sort of default cookie auth scheme for signing users in because you had some other um, mechanism for how users got signed in, you had some sort of customization in your ASP.NET authentication, and you only wanted to use this to sign users out, then what you would do is you would leave this as true so that we're always going to go to the ASP.NET the ASP app to, to do those sorts of things. And you would change this default scheme to be remote app authentication as the default. Um, so depending on your scenario, one or the other of these might be right. In my case, either one's going to work because it's a simple uh, cookie auth scenario. Okay, uh, let's see. At this point, this should be all we need to change in our ASP.NET app. Oh, our ASP.NET Core app. We do, of course, though, need the ability to log out because the whole point is we want to be able to log out with a request to this ASP.NET Core app and not have to go to ASP.NET. So for that, let's go ahead and add a controller. I'm going to add something called, we'll call it account controller. Oops, not add. Add controller, add. Account controller. Okay, there we go. And let's add an endpoint here to log out. There we go. Okay, so when the user hits the logout uh, endpoint, we will just call sign out async for the cookie scheme, which remember is going to use the same cookie as the ASP.NET app, so it will correctly log the user out from the perspective of both applications at the same time, then we redirect to uh, just our, our default path. And we're still able to have validation of the anti-forgery token here because each app will have its own logout. Now, in order for them to each have their own, they can't be named the same, otherwise, uh, the ASP.NET Core one would be used all the time, which isn't gonna work, so I actually called this log out, whereas the ASP.NET endpoint is called log off. So that means I need to go to my login partial for the ASP.NET Core app and change this to log out instead of log off. Um, and we should be all set. Okay. Um, now, eventually, of course, we will migrate over the account controller from ASP.NET, and everything will happen on the ASP.NET Core side, and then this uh, this could go away. Uh, we wouldn't need it anymore. But for now, this will allow them both to work side by side. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some changes to our ASP.NET app. We're going to start by adding a NuGet package that enables this shared uh, cookie scenario. So we're going to go to Manage NuGet Packages. We're going to Browse. And we are going to browse for microsoft.owen.security.interop. Find that package. Search is being a bit slow. Okay, there it is. We'll install this. And actually, um, I haven't tried the preview release. I assume preview is fine, but when I was testing this out, I used the latest stable release. So I'll switch to that just to not jinx my demo. So let that finish, then we'll just bump it down. Okay, and you know, I'm just gonna cancel this because that's not the version we want anyhow. We're gonna grab this and do version 2.1.38, install that one. Okay, okay. Yep, we accept. We are going to install the package. All right, and I, I expect that a newer version is fine, but that's, not the one I tested on, so we'll let this finish installing. Okay, with that done, we now can come into the ASP.NET app, go into where we configure um, our auth, and we're gonna make a couple of changes here. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to need to share those data protection keys. So let's uh, define that same DP keys folder under application data. And this could be any path that the apps share. Um, and again, you wouldn't necessarily share data protection keys on the file system in production, though you could if everything was on one machine. You'd probably use Redis, blob storage, something else. Um, okay, so now we need to update our cookie authentication to specify that we're going to sort of match the cookie authentication settings in the ASP.NET Core app. So, um, let's see, we've got the login path, which is good. Um, but let's specifically specify 
Um, after login path, I'm going to add a few things here. I'm going to add that the cookie name is .aspnet application cookie to make sure that it's exactly the same as we use from the ASP.NET Core app. And all of these other settings are mirroring what we had in the ASP.NET Core app. Uh, we also are going to, uh, then for the ticket data format, we're creating this new data format using the data protection shim from that NuGet package we just added. I got a typo there. All right. And so by using this data protection shim, we're going to be sharing the data protection mechanism between the two apps. And so they should be able to share the cookie. We'll go ahead and share, uh, we'll save that. And now, knock on wood, we didn't forget any important steps here. We can launch the app, see it working. Also notice that when we set up the data protection provider, we are both using the same path and using the same name for the app. We're using the eShop name here. It's important that those match, of course. Okay, so we're launching the app and we will test this out. Okay, app is launching. I'll go ahead and maximize this. Okay, we've got our app being served here. Give it just a minute to grab the pictures from the ASP.NET app where they're coming from. Okay, and now let's go ahead to our user info endpoint. That'll trigger the challenge that'll ask us to log in and then we'll get to see our claims in the user info page. Oops. Com. Okay, we log in. And behind the scenes, we went, we requested identity from the ASP.NET app. It I, uh, authenticated the user, uh, sent back the um, identity and the set cookie header to specify the auth cookie that the user is now using in their session. So we are logged in as a at a.com. We have this. And now if we go back to our homepage, since that's where we were before when it didn't work, from here, we should be able to log off. And what's going to happen is now the log off request will not go to the ASP.NET app. It'll just go to the ASP.NET Core app. And because it shares data protection and auth cookie settings with the ASP.NET app, we can just do the log off here directly. And voila, we are logged off. If we go over to session, which comes from the ASP.NET app, we will see that we are also logged off uh, from that app. Give it a minute to load. And here you go. We are not logged in here either. And so at this point now, our ASP.NET Core app, when it serves pages like user info or the catalog index, it's giving an experience identical to what we had from the ASP.NET app when we began this exercise. We have authentication working and sharing with the ASP.NET app. We're getting items out of session state. We're able to use uh, our other libraries that had little helpers that were providing this footer for us. And so at this point, we've completely migrated a couple of our endpoints. We've got the catalog index, as, uh, really all of the catalog endpoints. We've got our user info controller migrated. And so we're well on our way to having this completely migrated to ASP.NET Core. At this point, we would just iterate. We'd go back to the remaining controllers, which in this app, there really aren't many, just the PIC controller and a couple web API controllers. But you go back to those and you iterate and you go through the same process of right clicking, migrate, and the subsequent ones are always faster than the first because you've already moved over a lot of the underlying models and services. So um, we are well on our way. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we can uh, serve some of the static content like CSS, JavaScript, these images from our core app rather than our ASP.NET app. And then we will pretty much officially have everything moved over except for maybe just a few last controllers that we need to move. And so I will see you there for that one.